As you all know, I own a Toyota 4Runner and not some wimpy fifth gen that a lot of soccer moms always say, how do I get better fuel economy on my 2020 Toyota 4Runner or something along those lines? I'm talking about this thing right here. A 1995, also known as a second gen Toyota 4Runner. This one's an SR5 V6, so it has the notorious three points slow. A lot of Toyota enthusiasts call these things. So let's take a look underneath the hood of this Before thing. I need to show you underneath the hood of this car, I want to let you guys know that some people on the 4Runner group that I'm in, when are you gonna, when am I gonna take this thing off-road? And as much as I love to do that, I'm not four-wheel drive. As you can see, I don't think you can see it, but hopefully you can, but I don't have a front diff, no front CV axles at all. No transfer case, none of that shit. But I can swing it if I wanted to. The shits and giggles is going underneath the hood of this 4Runner. This is a three liter V6 electronic fuel injected. That's what the EFI stands for. And a lot of Toyota enthusiasts call this the three point slow. But if you're a Toyota technician or a just a Toyota geek, this is a engine called the 3VZE. 3VZE. That's what the engine's code name is called. And the reason why a lot of Toyota enthusiasts call this the three point slow is because, let's talk about the numbers. This engine produces 150 horsepower and 190 foot pounds of torque. Okay, some people say that's not a bad number. It's decent, which is, which is true. It's decent, it's not the best, but it's not terrible. But keep in mind, this car weighs 3,000 pounds. This thing is heavy. Yeah, sure, if you slap this engine on a Honda Civic or a Camry, then it would be impressive. The, the performance would be great because the, those cars are lighter. This is a heavy motherfucker. Pardon my language, but it's true. It is heavy. And it's not because of the 150 horsepower and 190 foot-pounds of torque it makes this engine bad. Really, that's nothing uh, compared to what this actual issue is. 150 horsepower, yeah, it's pretty slow pretty low numbers but you're not buying a 4Runner because it's fast you're buying it because it's rugged it's reliable and you can pretty much take it anywhere because 4Runners are known for their reliability but why is this engine bad well here's your simple answer blown head gaskets that's right blown head gaskets Subaru owners don't get me started with this okay I know what you're gonna be saying but your cars are not Toyota 4Runners with this engine. So Subaru owners, please shut the hell up, okay? So Good. what makes this engine so bad that really pisses off Toyota owners of this generation, especially if they drive a 4Runner T100 or a Hilux pickup from this generation? Why do Toyota owners are fed up? Why are Toyota 4Runners fed up with this engine? Why do they hate this engine? Like I said, blown head gaskets. And I'm gonna be citing this from drivetribe.com because there's also another person, I'm also gonna back up my claim as well, that there's another 4Runner owner that wrote an article on drivetribe.com who had this exact same 4Runner well, his is a 94, mine's a 95, but same generation. That had, that had a, he even had a head gasket issue. So, let's talk about that. The engine itself is an iron block with an aluminum head on top, okay? That in itself, okay, that's quite interesting. A iron engine block with aluminum heads, but Here's the problem. There are small gaps. I'm citing this through drivetribe.com from this other 4Runner owner. There's a small gap between coolant ports on cylinder number one, located over here, and cylinder number six, right behind over there, that has that issue. What is that issue? There's a small little gap between those coolant ports on cylinder number one and cylinder number six, and those can lead to fail failures of head gaskets. Because here's the thing, for one thing, oil and coolant or antifreeze don't like to get mixed up. You don't want that. And plus, 
head gaskets are located in an area where the pistons is at and that's where a lot of that compression all that power is being taken place at so and those pressures those compression that you're gonna that the piston or the combustion chamber is located at the pressures inside that part is really really high and any sort of imperfection or some kind of some kind of uh I don't know what it is, but anything that interrupts that that flow is going to eventually cause the head gaskets to fail. So, with those with those being said, a failing head gasket could lead to overheating, and you do not want that. And I can see why a lot of Forerunner owners of this generation hated this particular engine. Now, for some of you non-car nerds. If you guys wanted to know, how can you tell if your engine has a blown head gasket? Well, simple. Start the car up and look at your exhaust. If you see a trail of white smoke, blown head gasket. Okay, so that is the big reason why this engine is so bad by Toyota enthusiasts and even non-car enthusiasts in general because of blown head gaskets. Now. Here's the question that you guys might ask me. Did I have any issues with the head gaskets on this car? Keep in mind, I only owned this car for about two years now. And let me answer your question right now. I have no head gasket issues so far. And thank God I don't have that issue when I got this car from my uncle back in 2018. Thank God I did not have that. Because why? Like I said, this engine is known to blow head gaskets. And a lot of, if you're looking at second generation Toyota 4Runners with this engine, usually the ones that are for sale are low priced because they have blown head gaskets or some, some sort of those lines that it needs some engine work or something like that. Somewhere on those lines, if they say it needs some engine work, or needs new head gaskets, I suggest you don't buy it unless if you know how to fix a 3VZE. Now, like I said, I don't have that issue so far, and thank God I don't have that issue yet. They, a lot of 4Runner owners told me that around 200,000 miles, somewhere around those lines, you will encounter that kind of problem. But I kind of like agree with them but at the same time I kind of disagree and I'll tell you why okay so like I said I have two reasons to back it up so one thing is neglect and abuse now disclaimer not everybody is mechanically inclined not everybody are car nerds not everybody are car enthusiasts not everybody knows everything about cars as much as we do uh, at least the people who watch my channel and I get that not everybody are car nerds quite understandable I get that, but at least get to know your car because if you know what the problem is on your car, you want to take it to a shop and talk to a mechanic and if he's dishonest, he will he or she will scam you for money, okay? Because there's a lot of dishonest mechanics that will do repairs on your car that really don't need to be repaired. So at least get to know your car. So if you know what the problem is, if you find what your problem is, you can take it to a mechanic and fix it up for you. And you could save you a ton of money towards the end. So that's reason number one, in my opinion, it's because of neglect and abuse. Not everybody is mechanically inclined, I understand that, but that does not give you the excuse to neglect your car and not do its scheduled maintenance. And here's reason number two from 3VZ owners having this issue. I agree and disagree on what they say. I agree because, yes, the engine is known to blow head gaskets. That's a fact. It is a fact right there. But I disagree to an extent. And also I, I agree to an extent because I agree that, yes, they blow head gaskets. But that's just during the first model years 
of the production of the Toyota 4Runner with this engine. Keep in mind that this engine came out in 1986. Before that, 1985 and below, the 4Runner was it came standard with a 22RE, which is a 2.4 liter four cylinder. It was not until 1986 till 1995 that the 4Runner had this engine as an option. So, blown head gaskets, yes, but during the first model years of first few model years of the 4Runner's production run with this engine had those kind of flaws. But as time goes by, Toyota has been sending their customers recall letters saying that, oh, we will fix your head gaskets for free, no cost, no money, no, you don't need to open up your wallet and give us your money, we'll do it for free, okay? They will replace your head gaskets for free. So, as years went by, when the Toyota 4Runner with this engine started to develop, Toyota, in my, based on what I'm thinking, especially in the business, in the, in the car industry, what I'm thinking of is Toyota found out the problem, they figured out the problem with these three VZE head gaskets blowing, and they improved on it. So, I believe, I, I, this might not be correct, but somewhere in 1992 when this car was facelifted to look like this, because when this car came out in 1990, yeah, 1990, not 1991, 1990, this had no Toyota logo that looked like this. It just says Toyota in big, bold letters. That was it. It, it did not look like this. So I think... When that 4Runner was starting to develop and when the car started to be facelifted in 1992, I think Toyota found out the issue, so they improved it to prevent that head gasket from blowing off. That's just what I'm seeing in the car industry. Because I do, I do believe the fact that, you know, yes, the engine during its first model years, or even a car as a whole, will have those kind of flaws that most people probably don't like. And then the following years, as during the car's development run, it's going to improve. So, I agree that yes, blown head gaskets. But I also disagree that Toyota themselves found out what the issue is and they improved it. They found out what the problem is and they fixed it up. Because Toyota is not going to keep selling the car with this exact same engine on this car if they're just going to, if they're just going to let that blown head gaskets to happen. So those are my thoughts on the Toyota 3VZE. Yes, it's known to blow head gaskets, but in my personal experience, I never had that issue. And personally, I think this car still has life to go. Because, like I said, yeah, the Toyota 4Runner's first production run with this engine had those flaws. And I personally think as the car started to evolve with this engine, Toyota found out what those problems were, fixed it up for you guys, even for free for the ones who all had those head gasket issues. They fixed it up for you guys for free. And as far as this concerned, this is a 1995, like I said. I think when this car came out in like, I believe 1994, 1993, somewhere around there, around those years, Toyota found out the problem, fixed it up. And so far, a lot of people are not having those head gasket issues. But also keep in mind, that logo, Toyota, they're known for reliability and you just can't go wrong with a Toyota 4Runner. You just can't. So those, uh, those are my thoughts. Talk to you guys again later. And like I said, 3VZE, we like making fun of it. We love making fun of it. We like to call it three points slow. But like I said, this thing has its life. This thing can still last for a very long time if you know how to take care of it and if Toyota fixed those problems that a lot of 4Runner owners addressed. So those are my thoughts. Talk to you guys again soon.